Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more color to her skin tone and her chin. And um, I have to work very, very slowly because, and super light touch, because I just want to add some light tones um, to, this, to the flesh because once I start bringing in the dark colors around her face and the hair, it kind of changes the way the skin tone looks. So um, even though it might look like I'm done with her skin at one particular point, I'm not really done because I don't know what the final look like um, outcome is going to look like until after I pull in all the hair around her face and the dark background. So the background gets kind of monotonous and they're just filling in all those little tiny black areas. Um, so I start kind of moving around and adding color to the skin just to not be doing the same thing over and over. Um, so I'll kind of jump around between the skin and the background and the hair and try to like add color. Now the, the light, slightest amount of touch when I start adding these colors shows a big difference. I mean you can see um, just with a little bit of touch with one color um, it, it doesn't take very much, a very light amount to really start to kind of make that color pop and um, like I said, and I don't really know what the final color I want or, or how it's going to look until it's right next to that dark um, from the hair and the skin, uh, the background. So, sorry, I'm trying to talk and draw is a little bit more difficult. But um, I'll just sit here and, and really lightly work in some deeper tones. Um, otherwise, what happens is the black from the background and the dark from her hair can really wash out those skin tones. and all the work that you've done starts really looking like um, her face can look like you didn't do anything. I mean, you've worked and worked and worked on it and built up the, from the white paper and then all of a sudden the skin and the hair is all around it and you're like, okay, well now she's white again. So you have to add these darker colors again. But it's, it's tiny little movements and you may not I may not, you know, feel like I'm getting very far along, but I know that when I step back and look at it, um, it will be darker. The tones will be darker, and I'll just have a little bit of color added to it. Same with the shadows. As I'm working in the shadows, I'm working very slowly to build up those colors. This is why this piece is taking me so long. Um, I know a lot of you have been following it for a while. It's it's a hundred percent color pencil, and so we're talking about a very large drawing, and every tiny little mark counts. Every tiny little stroke of the pencil changes it a little bit, but it takes a very long time and a lot of hours. I'm currently working on multiple projects as well as um, workshop videos for the upcoming Art of the Carolinas, so I don't have quite as much time as I'd like to dedicate where I usually work eight to ten hours at a time working on a drawing. Um, with this one I have to spend a little bit less time just so I can get all of my other commitments done, um, but I still enjoy taking a few hours, but with, with this piece, but just a few hours can, um, while it makes a big difference, it's just a little tiny mark in the overall process because the overall process is, is very lengthy with 100% color pencils and it's very rewarding at the same time a lot of people are like oh you've already discovered ways to make this go faster why in the world are you going back to 100% color pencils well I never really considered myself changing away from this medium I love color pencils I love drawing with 100% color pencils um, I also love experimenting and trying new things. I do like the ability to use pan pastels. I love my pan pastels because I can make things go a lot quicker, um, softer, different, just it's different. The same with my, um, with my oils. I love them, but that's always really nice to come back to 100% color pencil. It's just a level of, you know, how much patience you have because you really do need to have a lot of patience to get this 
100% color pencil drawing to where I'm happy with it um, and I have all the right colors and you know because it's my daughter so she's 15 I'll finish it before she grows up <laughs> uh, it's, it's not a terribly long project I mean I think it'll be less than a hundred hours which sounds like a lot but when you think of an average work week it's 40 hour work week it's not that long it's just that I'm dividing it between a lot of other things that I'm working on so it does take um, a little bit longer but you can just see that it's a very very slow process it's you know what I've done so far you don't really notice a lot of difference uh, but I've been working on this shadow around her mouth for a good while and um, I still have a ways to go to get it to where I'm happy with it. Um, and the white, the light from my whitewashing or from my um, hot light kind of washes it out. So I don't worry about the word whitewash. When you try to talk and draw, sometimes the words get lost because it really is a right brain thing to do is to draw and then all of a sudden you're trying to use language. <laughs> But the, the light is very bright, and so it's it kind of washes out the color. She's actually a lot, um, I think the colors are a lot richer when I look at it in person versus when I look back at what I've done on the video. The video tends to make the, the colors less vivid, less vivid and less bright, but that's okay because I know the overall piece when it's done will be very bright, colorful. It's very time consuming and every little, you have to have a very sharp pencil, every little tiny mark counts and I can't miss any of them. So it's, it's something that you have to commit a lot of time to if you're willing to do 100% color pencil, especially on this large of a drawing and you want to um, work towards photorealism. <laughs> 